josh talk kind of session in the morning so i am in good practice at the moment <laughs> i have to congratulate you for a absolutely stunning interaction with david gaur it was oh, he was so good he was he was uh, so humble and so sweet i was very delighted it was a fan moment for me you could see i couldn't stop smiling <laughs> wonderful i think we're live on youtube and uh, it's 3:30 uh, the good thing about the online world and the corona virus world is that we start on time i know as school teachers you would always start your classes on time but the world where i live in we're typically 3 to 5 to 7 minutes late so mm -hmm. once again good afternoon to all of you and uh, thank you very much for being here today gurpreet ma'am thank you and thank you everyone from your wonderful wonderful school mm -hmm. So today we have Vivek Atre with us, who will be our speaker for the day. But before Vivek starts, I'd love to just take a few minutes over here, a subject which I'm extremely, extremely passionate about. And the subject that I want to talk about is the wonderful work that all of you as teachers are doing. I think it's not been picked up by the media, but my voice, I think, is echoing, right? It's cracking, sir. Ah, it is cracking. Give me one second. I I apologize. Give me one second, everyone. I'll probably. Uh, can I be heard now? Yeah. Now it is clear. Fantastic. Switch off. Second, I think. Uh, Ma'am, can you hear me now? Yeah, fairly fine. Okay, lovely. So I wanted to congratulate everyone for all the teachers for an amazing, amazing work that you all of you are doing. Uh, many times. Thank you. Thank you. Media has picked up nurses, doctors, and others who they call COVID warriors. I actually call the teachers of India as the biggest COVID warriors for not only taking care of the homes, but also taking care of online learning that is happening. So not a day of learning is being lost. But more importantly, I think we're nurturing young minds, which is absolutely, absolutely fantastic. I think in the context of that, at Shulani, we decided to create a bunch of uh, webinars or uh, lecture series, and we're doing three, four of them every day. Uh, and I'll speak a second on that. Uh, and this is one of them. So we're speaking to school teachers and school principals. Uh, we also have a generic uh, set of webinars that we call the Yogananda series, and I'm going to uh, send the links to you, ma'am. Uh, you might want to circulate them to your teachers or students. We're going to start an Inspire series for students uh, to give them counseling and give them direction about what they want to do. And we're doing one on uh, deep subject matter, uh, which we call expert talks. So it's wonderful and exciting times for us. I won't take more time, but we'll very quickly introduce Vivek Atre. Uh, Vivek is a very, very dear friend. Uh, he's also a uh, honorary and visiting professor at Shulini, an advisor to us, an ex-IS officer, but more importantly, a wonderful, wonderful human being, a TEDx speaker, an electrifying speaker. And many of us don't know, but he's also uh, very fond of cricket. And I think you were in the under, 90, under 18 or under 19 cricket team, very close friends with all the big names in cricket that we know. So that's Vivek for you. But before Vivek starts, uh, I'd request Gurpeet ma'am to uh, uh, give us a 30 second, one minute of her views, and then we'll hand it over to Vivek for a wonderful 35 minutes. Uh, we'll request all of you to please ask questions and make it interactive. Uh, we'd love to answer every question that you put. I'll also be playing a couple of videos in between to give you a context of what Vivek talks. Over to you, Gurpreet ma'am, and thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Atul. I am blessed and uh, welcome, Mr. Uh, Vivek Atre. Uh, I, am I sounding well? Yes. Ah, okay. Well, uh, uh, welcome to you and it is a privilege to listen to you because I have been uh, listening to you on the YouTube and uh, kind, of, uh, kind of energy you insight in everyone. I mean, it is truly, truly inspiring and amazing. And uh, I'm very sure that today my staff members and I will be definitely benefited from your uh, wonderful talks. And uh, the teachers also, of course, you know, they will be motivated as they are working, working. So most welcome. And I'm blessed. I am uh, grateful to Shuli University for creating such a wonderful platform. 
podium. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so, Atul, I'll start my session. Please go ahead, Vivek. I'm going to put myself off the video and uh, I'll request Gurpreet Ma'am if uh, you feel like you can also switch off your video and mute yourself. Fairly fine. Thank you very much, Gurpreet Ma'am, for uh, that uh, welcome note. And uh, nice to know that you've been watching videos on YouTube. I'm sure uh, that helps me to know that I am achieving the objective that I have set out for myself of uh, spreading positive energy and enthusiasm in the people of India. And uh, one of the main uh, regions where I focus is Himachal. And as you know, I'm visiting professor and uh, advisor with Shulini University, which is like a family. And uh, Atul is a close friend, the entire family, Dr. Kosla, everyone is so warm and it is so uh, path breaking of them, I would say, to undertake uh, this exercise apart from other initiatives. And that is this exercise of reaching out to schools to teachers primarily, and to, in this difficult period, to energize them, hopefully, and to maybe impart some skills also. So uh, just to set the context, uh, as Atul said, this will be about 35 minutes in all with a video or two in the middle. Uh, we'll have a video after about 10 minutes from now, and then we'll have a video at the end. And we'll also have questions and answers where anyone who's on the chat can uh, ask the questions uh, by typing the question on the chat or the Q&A, whatever they like. So this is a session on finding success within. And uh, that also happens to be the title of my book. Uh, let us first talk about uh, who is a successful person in life. Mm -hmm. So if I name a few people, uh, you will agree with me that in worldly terms, they are considered to be successful. Uh, Donald Trump is the president of United States. Uh, Mr. Putin is the president of uh, US, uh, Russia, rather. And uh, Boris Johnson is the prime minister of the UK. Uh, Mr. Narendra Modi is the prime minister of India. Uh, we have uh, uh, other world leaders. We have famous personalities like Shah Rukh Khan or Sachin Tendulkar or Virat Kohli or P.V. Sindhu, Saina Nehwal or uh, Roger Federer name it, everybody can name a list of famous people, powerful people. If you talk of rich people, then you talk of Ambani's, you talk of the Tata's, you talk of Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos and whatever. So these are the people who people normally consider to be successful. And if you look at this list, yes, they are successful. There's no doubt about it. But is it not possible for someone to be successful without being on top of the ladder in worldly ways. Let us talk about that. So somebody who's a gate man, <coughs> excuse me, who opens the gate for a train every day at about, let's say, uh, or rather he shuts the gate for the traffic at the railway crossing. He's the man in charge of that railway crossing and four times a day the train crosses. He does his job with precision he stops the traffic for about five minutes each time. 20 minutes of the day, he's busy. And the rest of the day, he has to be alert generally, but he doesn't have anything to do. And he's sitting calmly. <clears throat> then there's the story of an American businessman who visited a village. And uh, he saw the people there sitting coolly, just relaxing, catching fish. And somebody would come and pick up those fish and sell the fish somewhere else they would get some profit out of it. So this American businessman tells this village community, he says, why don't you guys, you know, uh, energize yourself and start uh, catching more fish, work 24-hour uh, work shifts, work eight-hour shifts in uh, uh, series. And when you buy, when you get so much fish, why don't you sell it to the nearby town? You'll get a better market rather than selling it to the big village nearby. And then you can get some marketing people. I will pick up a lot of your fish. We can enter into a business agreement, this, that, and the other. So then the man sitting there, the old man who's a representative of the village, he asks him, what will happen after that? He says, then you'll have lots of money. And then you'll be able to buy a new house. And then you'll be able to buy a new car. And then you'll be able to sit by the riverside and cool, uh, cool off and have a good time and relax. He says, that's what I'm doing right now. 
So I don't need to go through this entire business project and reach the same place where I am at the moment. So if a person is content in his life, whether he is the security guard at the railway crossing or whether he is a small time businessman, he can be successful in his own mind. I also give the example of a Golgappa wala. And this Golgappa man is somebody who stands by the roadside in Chandigarh. And I've seen him many times, he's a poor man. He sells Golgappas to people for about 10 rupees a plate, I think. And he makes about three, 400 rupees a day, which doesn't add up to much, but it's enough for him as a family per month. And he looks so happy. He smiles from ear to ear. He's always pleasant in his uh, visage. I often see him uh, when I cross in my car, but I never stop and have his Golgappas because they don't look clean and hygienic. One day I wrote an article about him and I decided that this man is so peaceful and calm. I must tell the world about him. I wrote the Golgappa man and how his winsome smile wins over our hearts and how the poor man is so happy. So I went to him with that cutting and gave it to him and said, see, I wrote about you in the paper. He was astonished. He didn't know he has a fan who crosses him every day in the car. And he was a little scared also of me because that time I was in the IS and I had a Sarkari Gadi. I stopped it. And then I took a picture with him and then I made him feel comfortable. I had some Golgapas also. So he was so thrilled with life and always smiling. I asked him, he says, my secret is that I don't worry. I leave everything to God. I work hard, whatever money I earn, I share with my family. And that's it. And I said, how about future? He says, yeah, I'll be fine. Everything will be okay. I have children to marry off. So it is the attitude which matters. The first point that I'd like to make in this session on finding success within is that attitude matters. And that attitude comes from within. And that attitude comes from our thinking. It comes from our mind, mindset. So how do we uh, have a, a positive attitude? A positive attitude of contentment. Are we grateful for what we have? Even in this lockdown period, there are so many people who are feeling ungrateful about their lives. They feel they are complaining that, you know, we are in our house, we, we, they have enough to eat, but they are just not able to do what they normally do. They are feeling a little uh, uneasy and it is normal to be uneasy at the, such a time. Uh, you can't do normal routine stuff, but they have to be grateful for being alive, for being unaffected by the disease, for having a family with them, for having a place they call home. So it is some place that gives us that nourishment, that happiness, that sucker that we need in life. So contentment is an attitude and it is something that we feel good about. Then we aspire for more and better. So the second point I'd like to raise is, especially for younger people, teachers as well as maybe youngsters whom you are teaching young teachers young professionals young people who are starting out in life do not think that you have to be restless discontent with what you have and more and better and more and better is everything that you need it is not going to happen that one day you feel i have enough now to be content and happy it will never happen you will always keep racing for more so there is a saying that I often quote. It is that when I was 16 years old, not me, but someone else. When I was 16 years old, I used to admire people with luxuries. And today I'm 35 or something that person says, I'm 35. Now I admire people with inner peace. And I actually avoid people who are running after luxuries. So what is it that makes that difference? When we have a particular life, we can be successful in that life. We don't need to move to America. We don't need to buy that limousine. We don't need to buy that scooter also. There can be a cycle on which we're happy. Contentment comes from there. It is an attitudinal thing. Yes, the next point is to get into a profession which we love. If we get into a profession that we love, then we will feel more successful and happy. If you love teaching, you're in the right profession. And why not love teaching? Atul and I are examples of two people who left our careers in midstream and have got into teaching. Atul is pro-vice chancellor of Shulini. I'm a speaker all over India. 
and in shulini i love interacting with the students they are so vibrant so creative they ask questions they get inspired by what i say so being in the teaching profession we are able to give back and it is something that inspires others so this is something which we should learn from uh, others and teachers who are in the teaching profession if they love their work if they go with passion to their office or their school or college then they will feel energized to do what they are meant to do which is teach students well and that is something which balances your life loving your work i think at this point we'll pause for a video uh, of a very creative uh, project that has been carried out by shulini university and uh, how that girl aman has won accolades for her research and creative work so i'm going to request atul to play the video thank you vivek uh, uh, let me play the video and then i'll uh, sort of tell you the story of uh, why this is relevant for our discussion today but uh, give me a second to share the screen somewhere centered about this is ability to change lives ability to create something that can fundamentally change the world and here is aman a phd student of ours at shulini who comes from a relatively lesser privileged family in punjab she was a bit of a troubled child in her undergrad and masters and did some amazing amazing work in her phd and how did it happen so let me first tell you why this is so important and why uh, aman is a star so aman is also a young water fellow what is a young water fellow there are more than 100000 researchers across the world who apply every year to a un award called the young water fellow and aman won this award hands down she spent 3 to 6 months i think 4 months in geneva as part of this award but her story doesn't end here post that she has won a 25 lakh award to continue her work continue her research from tata trust and lockheed corporation which is the largest us uh, research company uh, how did it happen it happened very simply because for three things i think one her professor dr saurab was able to give her a project that she was interested in something that was close to her heart secondly she was stretched in terms of the work so she we stressed her to say that okay do something beyond what you normally do but third and more importantly i think dr saurav gave her the opportunity to think outside the box to be creative and when all of these three things happened here was someone aman who was studying in a relatively small university in himachal away from home that didn't come from a convent school didn't come from you know the best of uh, schools that we 
typically associate success to and sort of won the laurels. She beat students from Harvard, from IITs, from the best universities to get this award. And I always use this as an example because if Aman can do it, all our students can do it. Every student from Solon can attempt to do something similar. And it's an example for us to stretch our students, make them think outside the box, make them do stuff with their hands. And I think if you can give that environment, we can get wonders done. I think with this, I'll request Vivek to continue and I'll switch off till the question and answer session. Thank you, Atul. And uh, what an inspiring story indeed. Uh, at the end, I'll request, and Atul will request Gurpreet ma'am to share her views. Right now, we'll continue with this topic of finding success within. And where do we find success from? So the next quality I'd like to mention in my book, I've titled it as preparing for Monday morning. Actually, it means preparing for what is going to come ahead. That means we know that May, June, July are coming. Something may be coming in those months, which every year it is there. Uh, summer vacations this time are disturbed because of other things. But there are so many things which happen annually. We know they are going to come. Tax returns are to be filed. Some, uh, somebody has agricultural land. Some crops have to be readied. Whatever it is, we need to prepare ahead. If you are a teacher and you know that you have Monday mornings, which are tough, we have to prepare for Monday mornings in advance. In an office, I know in the government, often we would have 9.30 meetings at uh, office in the morning on Monday. And there, suddenly people will be caught unawares. Nine o'clock, you reach office, you remember, oh no, there's a meeting, you prepare, prepare. But by the time you reach the meeting, you are in a dark and the boss is not in the dark. He is all you know, ready to ask you fire questions, but you are not prepared. So how do we prepare? The previous week, the previous month, the previous day, we prepare. We don't firefight only. That means firefighting means that reacting to situations. But by anticipating situations, by planning ahead, is a great leadership quality as well as personal quality. As that personal quality, which gives you foresight and planning, methods like that. The next point, which cannot be missed in any session, is to be an able communicator. When you are actually a great communicator, sometimes you are even able to pass off something which you don't know. Not that we are trying to do that, but it is something which helps you to impress others. It helps you to get your point across effectively. In a classroom, a teacher who is a great orator, great motivator, good speaker, will be able to teach much better. If you are listless, if you are dull, so some of the points of being a good communicator, we discussed it in a session, are to be clear about what you have to say, to say it with good expression and clarity. It can be in Hindi, Punjabi, English, but whatever language you are speaking, to be confident and comfortable in that language, to be able to put forth your ideas. If it is an oral uh, uh, communication, then obviously to be clear and concise, to know when to stop, not go overboard explaining one point, and then the rest of the points you have to rush through, that is also not good. But written communication is even more important at times. When we write letters to someone which are full of mistakes or grammatical errors, or some whom you are addressing the communication, it doesn't look nice, doesn't give the right impression. And if somebody is deputy commissioner, it's no point writing deputy collector. If they don't use that terminology, it is better to look up and recheck, read your draft again and use formal language in formal communication. So communication is very important. It's a big subject. We can spend hours doing it. I often mention that there are some common Indian errors which we need to eliminate. Go to Google, find out what are the common Indian errors. I'll give you only one instance in this class. All of us in Punjab, Haryana, Himachal, Chandigarh have been taught that the bowl on the table which has vegetables in it is known as bowl. It is not known as bowl, it is a bowl. If you know English, it is a bowl. But all of us say bowl because that is how we have been taught. So we don't talk like that. We try to correct our English. It's only one minor example. There may be a hundred of them on Google. So check them out and see where you are wrong and correct yourself. The next point I'd like to say is balancing your life. 
that means that you are not over obsessed with one thing it is not only work that matters family matters equally family is actually top priority are people spending enough time talking to each other or are we only going through the motions breakfast lunch dinner television and then just doing sundry things at home and then maybe an argument or two and that's it sometimes that's all that happens children busy with their phones family is busy with their parents busy with their phones there are many uh, cartoons nowadays which say that okay let's get together this evening all of us and we'll sit together and stare at our phones i mean that is something which is a sign of the times we don't talk about lockdown days i'm talking about days when people actually meet and those days will come you might think right now that it will never happen again it's not like that life will go back to normal at some stage but we have to learn how to be behaved a little better so we don't do fubbing we actually remain in the constant time in the present and we listen to others so remaining balanced in our personality in our attitudes not getting over angry not being over soft being firm resolute being absolutely sure of what we want and knowing that we should never lose control of ourselves that is something which people need to look out for emotional intelligence is the next point it means we are in control of our emotions we are intelligent enough to understand what to say when to say it and how to say it in front of whom to say it so this example i must give because many people get it wrong when we are scolding someone and we have to scold children at times juniors at times a peer at times we don't scold them in front of others because they feel bad that those others are present at that time so it is very necessary to look out for the feelings and the sensitive situation should be avoided we should call that person in private and tell them this was wrong you should do it like this whatever it is that is very very important another thing about success is to look for actually where is it it is not available in mangoes or chocolates or uh, vacations they are all temporary they are giving temporary pleasures what is our general lifestyle how are we in a normal day are we looking forward to that day are we content with our lives or are we looking at it in various acquisitions let me get this thing let me buy that let me buy a new dress it's fine it's okay to buy a new dress it's okay to change your shirt every day in a different color now mark zuckerberg who's the founder of facebook owner of instagram and whatsapp also one joke about mark zuckerberg is that his mother is the only mother in the world who said mark spend more time on whatsapp and facebook and instagram because he's the owner he has to look after them right all other mothers say less time the other joke and not joke it's a serious thing he doesn't change the color of his shirt he wants to wear the same shirt and trousers color the same color every day so he says i don't want to decide in the morning what color to wear i believe that deciding what to wear is a creative process it should be done but if mark zuckerberg finds it suitable for him then best of luck to him i am fine with his lifestyle i have my own lifestyle so we have to basically look at what is comfortable for us what is creative for us and that brings me to the next point of success a very very important point which is creativity we saw aman being creative at shulini we see a lot of research work being done there but in our own lives can we sometimes change what we do the way we do it are we rushing into the same routine every day can we somehow we've been doing something all day long every day for the last 10 years if we change the way we look change the way we speak with the new word sometimes learned from oxford dictionary sometimes we watch shashi tharoor videos no harm he gives you inspiration in a different way you might laugh at him there was a senior politician who was sitting in his office a minister and shashi tharoor came to call on him so the moment shashi tharoor entered the room the minister took his dictionary out and kept it next to him so that he can understand what tharoor is going to say so there are so many ways in which we can improve our personality learn one word a day or maybe learn a new skill being creative also means that music which you wanted to learn 
you wanted to sing karaoke you wanted to uh, paint you used to paint about 20 years ago now you stop why don't you pick it up again creativity brings color to life it brings magic to life there are so many things that we can do to make our lives better and more successful in that sense otherwise monday to saturday you are working sunday you make rajma chawal and go to sleep then what do you do you relax relaxation is important but if on sunday you can also do 2 hours of reading something new learning something new from the internet or maybe helping out with an ngo it is creative things to do and therefore you become a different person some people they only help with the traffic as traffic marshals some people they teach others some people plant trees it could be anything these are creative things which help society learn a new skill especially younger people need to adopt these skills and the next one the next one is mindfulness which i cannot miss i must tell you that our minds are racing into the future racing into the past worried all the time fearful all the time so the quality in the bhagavad gita which is number 1 26 qualities are given in the gita for a human being to adopt number 1 is fearlessness fearlessness means i have so much faith on myself and on god that i don't feel worried and scared so i must control my restless worried scared mind because the battle of life is being fought in the mind and people who can control their mind to a large extent who can gather the courage to say what they have to say do what they have to do because their worries and fears are minimal then they will be successful people because we only defeat ourselves if we are scared to do something we wanted to apply for something we wanted to enter into a competition we wanted to perform on stage or speak on stage but because our inhibitions held us back we could not then life goes by and one day we regret so it is said that live life with experiences not with regrets and even if you go wrong there is no harm so therefore we must focus on minimizing our fears some people are more fearful than others some people keep worrying that worry fear is not a friend we must keep strong and positive the next one which is equally important is to not be over critical and cynical you know cynical uh, behavior negative behavior spreading rumors about someone okay playfully you can say you know friends in college will always say look at that boy is roaming around with that girl i mean these are friendly things in a way but if you go overboard rumors or gossip or criticism is worse you know criticizing someone overly dekho this person must be like this he must be like that maybe he is not maybe he is not to the extent that you are saying so you have to know that each person has a different story we have to empathize another factor for success empathy with others so we don't feel scared and fearful we don't criticize and we have empathy with others see all these qualities are not there in us to the fullest extent we cannot be perfect in any of them but we can improve we can be better than our friends we can be better than others and if one person can be patient and calm compared to us we can also be as patient and calm as that person he is also human so if we can emulate human beings who are better than us in certain things who seem to handle life better who are calm like the golga pawala and learn from them then we'll realize that uh, there are so many things ways that we can improve see there are uh, about 50 participants and we would uh, have a lot of questions on based on my experience last time so i'm not going to continue any more with the points the points are available in this book and uh, this book is called finding success within uh, it is uh, 52 life skills for young indians and of course not so young indians also can read it uh, it is uh, something which you will give you a lot of uh, practical aspects it was released in march and it is uh, available on kindle as well as amazon it is a book that will help you a lot but the last point before i hand over to atul is also get into meditation meditation will help you morning evening to be calm to be cool to be collected to help your uh, self to handle the day 
And one book that I'll promote and uh, tell you about for that is my favorite book. It's the Autobiography of a Yogi by Paramhans Yoganand, a very famous book. Once you read this book, you will understand why we need to meditate. And uh, Shulini has a great Yogananda Resource Center library, which is a spectacular place to visit with amazing environs and books, resource centers. On that note, I think I'll hand over to Atul to uh, show this video and then we can come to Q&A. Thank you, Vivek. I think before I, uh, you know, play the video, uh, being a teacher myself, I'm, you know, uh, I'm getting motivated to speak a couple of words if ma'am you allow me. Uh, I wanted to give you uh, two cents of advice, uh, which I think are very, very important in today's world, uh, in the Corona world, in the post-Corona world. Yes, please. And the first is, all of you are not just teachers anymore. I think from teachers, you've also become actors. You're being recorded and our acting and our teachings are being streamed all over the world, sometimes in the classroom, but sometimes outside. It's also being recorded and they're seeing by students beyond students. So for example, you do not know whether a parent is actually seeing your, your teaching life, which also puts a huge amount of responsibility on all of us, uh, which comes back to my first point, which is to say, uh, we, there are certain do's and don'ts of online education. Uh, as a teacher, there are a few things which I will advise you. And the first would be very simple things. First is just dress the way you would in a classroom. I'm so amazed to see Gurpreet, ma'am. You know, uh, I remember you always as someone very well dressed and that's what, the way you are even right now. So uh, sweet, so smiling sweet. and uh, dressed. And I think that's the way we need to be even online because people are observing us all the time. In fact, they're observing us more. Uh, the second would be uh, find a quiet place for your lectures or your, or your uh, classroom teaching. Uh, make sure it's outside the hustle and bustle of your household. It could be your bedroom and you can close the door, uh, but wherever it is, it needs to be quiet. And wherever it is, it needs to have reasonably good uh, Wi-Fi or uh, 4G capability. I mean, the different places in the house which have different Wi-Fi or 4G capability, we all know that. So that's where you allocate a desk. Have a good backdrop. This I learned from Vivek. You know, have a backdrop where you're going to sit. Uh, it just adds to the formality and the excitement of that lecture. And finally, just go prepared. Uh, uh, you might want to practice before your, your classroom lecture or your, uh, I don't know, what do you call them, your lessons, right? So, uh, and join two minutes before rather than, you know, two minutes later. So these are very small tips. But coming back to practice, because practice is what makes uh, us perfect. Uh, what I've learned, Vivek, is, you know, when you think about happiness and you think about being satisfied, the most unsatisfied people, I think, are the people who don't work. When I go around talking to guys who say, sir, I'm depressed. They're those people who don't have productive work. They go back home and uh, uh, they go back dissatisfied because they've not done anything productive the whole day. And then they become cynical. And over time, they cannot differentiate between white and black and sometimes even gray. So when I stretch my uh, faculty, when I stretch my students, they are very unhappy at that moment. They'll say, oh, mar gaye, sir, nahi kar sakte, ho nahi sakta. But after the day, after the day is over, and they go back home and they're sleeping on the bed, I think it's very satisfying. And next day morning, when you ask them, hey, how was the day? They say, sir, aaj bahut acha din tha. So point I'm trying to drive is, uh, do stretch your students a little bit. But you need to know how much you need to stretch them because you don't want to stretch them to panic mode. There's always the right amount of stretch, which US teachers would know. Uh, so I started off by saying, ma'am, that we're all very lucky. We're all very lucky that we are in the business of changing and inspiring students, young minds. And that is also the motto of Shulini. That's also the passion with which we work. So I wanted to share a small video on that, apart from the fact that it'll have Shulini in the end, but I think the message for all of us is the same, that it's the young minds who are going to change the world. It's only the young minds who will build a great India or a great soul in whichever way we look at it. So give me half a minute. I'm going to play it. I'm going to bring it up. Uh, and uh, uh, let me see how to make that happen. Uh, one second, everyone. OK. 
Okay. Throughout history, the young have always been the ones to shape the future. Country's biggest asset, our best bet to conquer the future. So what are you waiting for? Your time to dream is now. Dream of the research that can change the world. Dream of a high-flying corporate career. Dream of higher studies in the world's best universities. Dream of developing cutting-edge technology of the future. Dream of your own global startup. University, we empower you and enable you to chase your dreams and change the world. Shuri University, think learning, think success. Thank you. Uh, uh, I think uh, with that, we'll open up uh, for questions. But before we do that, Vivek, I know ma'am has been to Chulani. I'd also like to invite uh, every teacher, every student of your school, ma'am, over to us. Uh, we'd love to host you. Let's hopefully Corona will go away very quickly. Uh, all our prayers are together for that. And I'll request uh, uh, the teachers, please ask questions. But before they sort of warm up to that, uh, Vivek, uh, uh, I have one, one relevant question that I've been thinking about, which is, if you look at teachers today, uh, many of them are actually ladies and they have multiple responsibilities which are coming up now. They're not just teachers, they're also mothers, many times uh, daughters-in-law or daughters. Uh, sometimes they have to play the role of the wife, the husbands are there full time. So stress can be very high. Uh, how do they manage this stress? How do they multi juggle? What is your suggestion? Yeah, it's a very, very good question. And I think uh, the only way to do it is to prioritize and manage time, as I said earlier. Prioritization means that we give more time to that aspect of life, which is more important, simple. If we are spending a lot of time doing things which are not productive, or there is somebody who is taking away our time by virtue of just being maybe senior to us at home, uh, we have to listen to that person for one and a half hours every day, mother-in-law or someone. We try to make excuses. We try to cut down 45 minutes from that, listen to her, but get on with other things also. Or you prioritize in the sense that you did not have time to read a book which you wanted to read, but it is good for your self-development. You have to wake up half an hour early for that. You have to cut down somewhere. Try and not watch that TV serial at night before sleeping. Uh, in any case, I always say cut down on watching the news before sleeping. So watch hel healthy things, wholesome things, read them. Morning and evening for meditation, take out time. Meditation anyway will help you to deal with these problems, which Atul said, multifarious duties and responsibilities in a much better way. So do that. Uh, Atul, I just have a slide to share a few points before the questions. Yeah. Just okay. Let's see if I can share this. You're getting better, Vivek. Yeah, actually, I took a picture a little while ago. These are points which I just wanted to go over. 
and uh, finding success within i already mentioned emotional intelligence anger management we didn't stress too much in this class but anger management means that you are able to control yourself not lose your temper on things which don't deserve losing temper it's a big subject but you can see leadership qualities we discussed how we speak how we react how we respond social skills and conversation skills that means also listening skills reading voraciously we discussed read books so that you keep growing in life creativity we discussed how more music more art doing your own work in a more creative way teaching a chapter with new stories new anecdotes compared to last time the children might change but you are the same you get bored of teaching the same chapter otherwise uh, these relationships matter are more for younger people choosing a life partner being a good spouse is for everybody parenting skills not waiting for the blue ticks is basically about social media management not st stressing over it too much young people stress a lot the bigger picture of life that means integrity and values looking at what is really important in our life pause means that we are able to take a break every day for our own self development every week every now and then meditation i mentioned seeing the bigger picture i mentioned compassion and ngos mindfulness also i mentioned and being grateful for what you have is most most important so i think i can stop the share over there and here we are i think some people have raised hands my request would be if you could just add your questions either on chat or on q and a uh, because uh, uh, you're not live uh, we can't see you so we can only uh, you can write chat. down your question that's right i tell uh, before you know if people start asking questions others ma'am many thoughts that you have uh, would love to hear uh, i am very very grateful to uh, mr athre uh, because my take away today is mindfulness and emotional intelligence great i tell you you know because uh, i always believe in doing uh, multiple works at a time you know but uh, i have learnt is that if we have to give uh, quality to anything it should be mindfulness because you know every time it is next 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 in my mind uh, yeah. so yeah. i i have thought that you know i'll be more calm and uh, i will take the things in a very very positive way and another one i've really liked is uh, emotional uh, intelligence we need to understand the other person we are dealing with especially as a leader especially as a teacher we need to understand the mentality of uh, everyone especially the young children i mean these were all wonderful points uh, vivek uh, hats off to your uh, research and search and the way you have communicated everything and uh, atul hats off to you again you know because you have made it possible you have arranged for a wonderful session and it has broken monotony also you know because mm -hmm. many days we were teaching and uh, i was editing many videos coming to me and all that but now it is a welcome change though i am having many webinars every day here and there and uh, as vivek has said that uh, at the end of the lockdown i should be rich by my mind power so yeah. this is what i wanted to say all the good luck and uh, i would uh, like that we meet again you know for uh, such like uh, sessions and now i request my staff members my teachers to ask the questions right thank you very much thank you ma'am thank you well sir uh i hope there's no technology challenge uh, i hope that uh, i don't see any questions but i think before we see anything i'll also like to announce ma'am tomorrow we're doing a small as part of the yogananda guru series of uh, talks that shuluni is organizing every day so mm -hmm. tomorrow shafkat uh, manat ali khan the very famous uh, ghazal singer is on at 9 pm so i'll send the <laughs> invite to you you can circulate it to your students and okay. uh, teachers and whoever wants okay. to join you can join on youtube right right i so think we have uh, a question from me to ma'am which i can take up i think okay. yes please vivek uh, for the younger generation what advice would you like to give on patience so absolutely good question uh, these days uh, impatience is uh, more prevalent than patience and uh, people don't have much time although because my wife is from himachal i almost praise uh, always praise himachalis for being more patient <laughs> but they actually are they actually are very cool and calm people however everybody is impatient at times the younger generation needs to do two things i think firstly 
not expecting results in a hurry so this is the era of instant gratification you know you have a credit card you have a debit card you get what you want and think about the repercussions later when you have to pay your credit card bill then you realize so it is something that they need to understand that sometimes you have to wait for something for 6 months also to buy a new bike or whatever it should be done as per your means and patience also means you're not getting the results you want in sports in studies you have to keep slogging and working and it will come and the younger generation can be taught also deep breathing that is something which comes with meditation it helps us also anyone basically in uh, yogoda satsang what we follow we do something called double breathing it helps you to become calmer and more patient also so what we do is we exhale twice in an exercise we say so it's not a single breath it's a double deep breath and double breath inhalation exhalation this makes your mind calmer and meditation along with this that is something which they can do a few times a day and it will also help them patience is otherwise a virtue which will come through maturity then comes uh, okay uh, neeja ma'am is saying is really a matter of honor that we got the chance okay thank you ma'am thank you for that anyone else i think uh, that is it vivek so uh, thank you once again uh, thank you ma'am it's a true honor so there is a question there is a question in the okay, q&a there is a q&a that question in q&a that's right yeah, yeah, yeah. you missed it. vivek you want to see that yeah i can see uh, so kanya ma'am has got a question yeah so kanya ma'am is saying that she would like to know what is one quality that is required to become the favorite teacher how far humor plays an important role so <laughs> if everyone adopts this quality then again we'll have a tie because everyone will adopt uh, the best quality but uh, to become a better teacher and to be loved and liked by your children and students you don't have to be artificial about it if you are cheerful basically cheerful as a person and looking for the good in others it is said that be an encourager don't be a critic there are plenty of critics anyway out there so encourage people and uh, be cheerful and smiling yes humor plays a role as well in any session or class if you can come up with one or two anecdotes sometimes children go overboard in laughing and then they are difficult to control so make sure it's not overly funny but something which is balanced and which is you know just generally uh, humorous so best of luck to become the favorite teacher just work on your cheerfulness lovely so kanya i think uh, looks like we're coming to the end so i'd like to say thank you uh, thank you vivek uh, for a wonderful wonderful session it's always so inspiring to hear you every thank time you. i would say ma'am thank you for the opportunity that we could uh, speak to you and your teachers i and think uh, there are sorry for interrupting you i think there are more questions coming but maybe uh, because of technology uh, it is not being uh, okay, put one up question on something i think uh, so what i'll do is there is one question uh, on uh, by sir. again by nirja ma'am you can pick up uh, and we can always you can send us questions and we'll be delighted to answer ma'am but we can pick up nirja ma'am's question pick up nirja ma'am's question so basically she is saying can you tell us your strategies for civil services like books and time management so uh, sir, civil services study requires smart study smart study means allocating enough time for each sector or each uh, paper and if you are studying only one subject for 6 months it won't work you have to study smart not go too deep into one topic manage your time well uh, study the overview make notes and also uh, improve your writing style because it is not only important to clear the prelims you have to prepare for the mains mm -hmm. because if you clear the prelims then you are unprepared for the mains mm -hmm. there is not enough time so write a lot 200 word answers or whatever and also improve your uh, speaking skills make a viewpoint on each uh, aspect of current affairs and try and do that we have an academy in panchkula which is uh, collaborating with shulini for students in the new session so we can also tie up with you Okay. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Have a wonderful day. Stay blessed and please be safe. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very Thank very you. much. Thank, Thank you. you. Stay connected. Thank you. Thank you.